All right, welcome to a brief video where we just want to talk about one of the challenges in the absolute volume method for concrete mix design. So far, we've been saying we're mixing one cubic yard of concrete, but all the values we have found to date, cement, water, coarse aggregate, have been weights. So we need to figure out a way, though, when it's time to determine how many fine aggregates we need in step nine, we're trying to still make one cubic yard, so we have to figure out how much volume we have, of course, of cement and of water and subtract that from one cubic yard to know the volume we need of fines. How are we going to do that? Well, let's think about some facts that we know. First off, you might be saying that, hold on, in step 3b, we found the bulk volume of the coarse aggregates. Why can't we just use that? Well, that bulk volume actually includes void spaces. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we were to look at these chocolate balls here and dump them in this glass, we'd see that we actually get a mix of the chocolate balls and air. And so we don't want that void space in our volume calculation because we know that the cement and the sand and the water could fill up those voids. So we really want the volume as if we melted all the chocolate down into one solid piece. So we have to figure out how we're going to actually do that and move forward in our volume method to get those solids. But fortunately for us, we actually know some science. And it turns out that we can actually use the specific gravity of each material and use that specific gravity to help us convert from weight to absolute volume. So let's just do a little bit of math here. And we're going to do it for just some random material A so that we can apply this to any material, cement, water, coarse aggregate, we want. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to just talk about things we know. So we could say we have a unit weight of material A. Our unit weight, basically, it's like a density, but instead of using mass over volume, we're just using the weight of the material over volume. And we could rewrite that expression as the volume of material A then would be equal to the weight over the unit weight. Now, we want to actually get a little tricky with that volume formula, and so we're going to multiply the denominator of the uh, volume formula by 1, but our 1 is going to be the unit weight of water over the unit weight of water. So what that would basically look like is we'd have the volume of material A, and that's going to be equal to the weight of material A divided by its unit weight, but then also the unit weight of water over the unit weight of water in the denominator. And if you look closely at that term, the unit weight of material A over the unit weight of water, you might recognize that term. And that term is really just the specific gravity, g sub s. All right, so we can now just substitute in the specific gravity for that fraction of unit weight over unit weight of water, and we can actually find the formula for the absolute volume of material A. And so the volume of material A would then just be equal to the weight of material A divided by its own specific gravity and divided by the unit weight of water. Fortunately, we can get the specific gravities of our aggregates right from the material properties we're given for each aggregate. And the unit weight of water is a known value the unit weight of water is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, uh, typically written as PCF, but that is pounds per cubic foot. And then the specific rate of specific gravity of water is just the unit weight of water over the unit weight of water, so that's one. And for cement, it's actually 3.15. So now we can take this generic volume equation for any material and we can use it to find the absolute volume of our cement, of our water, and of our coarse aggregates. Of course, we would need the specific gravity, or excuse me, the volume of air in our mix, but if we say we're 5% air, then it's 5% of one cubic yard. And we can add up all those volumes, 
and see how short we are from having our one cubic yard and then we know what the volume is we need of the fines. So take a little bit of look at this math, make sure you understand it because that absolute volume relationship is going to be key for us finishing the mixed design for concrete. Thanks for watching.